Welcome back to the Online Education Success Series of the Explorations Learning Network. Today, we're going to be taking you through collaboration. Hi, I'm Avi Anderson, and this is the Explorations Learning Network. Many online courses provide you the opportunity to study a subject by yourself, which is great if you want to learn a skill, learn how to solve a problem, or research a topic. Online collaboration involves working with a single partner, working in learning teams, engaging the entire class, or even involving a larger community. Online learning can provide wonderful opportunities to collaborate with instructors, facilitators, tutors, other students, as well as online learning communities like groups and Facebook to explore subjects in detail. You'll also be expanding your understanding as you listen to, interpret, and clarify the opinions of other individuals all over the world. There are many different ways that people collaborate in an online class. No matter how you collaborate, it's important to remember that you'll be working together to solve a problem or to gather information. However, no matter what type of collaborative activity you may be involved in or how large of a team you're working with, the important thing to remember is that in collaborative learning, you're teaching each other. Collaborative learning theory, even in a computer environment, can be traced back to an early 20th century learning theorist from Russia, Lev Vygotsky. Vygotsky believed that people learn because they want to demonstrate what they know to a more knowledgeable other, such as parents or teachers. But the MKO, more knowledgeable other, can also be other students or even a computer avatar, like me. E-learning instructional designers, the people who make online classes, use video personalities and avatars as MKOs to increase student learning. When you're involved in a collaborative learning experience, both you and your teammates take turns acting as the more knowledgeable other. Whether you're tutoring your teammates, discussing an issue, or brainstorming a project, you're teaching each other. According to a 2001 research study conducted by Curtis and Lawson, students demonstrate the following teaching activities when engaged in collaborative learning. Giving and receiving help, trading information, explaining, sharing, providing feedback, questioning information, supporting the dedication of more energy for the activity, improving group communication skills, and reviewing the efforts of their peers. There are oodles of collaborative learning activities, but they can be broken down into five distinct categories. Collaborative writing, technology-mediated discourse, group exploration, problem-based learning, and project-based learning. Let's explore some specific activities in each of these categories. Students can collaborate in writing exercises by participating in writing group papers, writing blogs, and using interactive whiteboards to write material together. Holding discussions in chat rooms and forums are great examples of technology-mediated discourse, but you can also participate in surveys, polls, and brainstorming activities like mind mapping. Going on an adventure in a virtual gaming system or exploring activities and programs like Second Life are awesome ways to conduct group exploration. You may also find yourself using Skype or FaceTime to engage in group exploration activities. Like the name says, Problem-based learning activities require that your group collaborate to solve a problem. These can be game-based problems or pressing social issues that require more than one perspective to understand. Finally, project-based learning activities require that learning teams share a common goal to accomplish a task. This can be as simple as creating a presentation or as complicated as doing scientific field work. No matter what the activity, it's important that you share what you know, tell your teammates what you think, and be respectful. 
The Explorations Learning Network is a production of Clark College and is sponsored through generous donations and the support of students and faculty. Mark Gaither is our producer and director, and this episode was sponsored through a Department of Labor grant administered by the Washington State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. The Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board is a partnership of labor, business, and government dedicated to helping Washington residents obtain and succeed in family wage jobs while meeting employers' needs for skilled workers. I'm Aviance Anderson for the Explorations Learning Network, advancing learning for the information age.